big wildfires are burning up crucial wildlife habitat in Idaho and the Great Basin. In 2015, the Soda Fire burned 280,000 acres in Idaho and Oregon in only eight days. Three years later, the Martin Fire burned more than 400,000 acres in four days in Oregon and Nevada. The list goes on. Back when I got here, uh, around 1981, a big fire was a fire that was over 100,000 acres. If we fast forward to 2007, we had the Murphy Complex fire over from Twin Falls to the Nevada border. That was 650,000 acres. A couple years later, two fires in Oregon, very close to each other, total fire footprint, one million acres. So what we're seeing is what we call the mega fires, these huge landscape scale fires. The big wildfires are burning up some of the best wildlife habitat that's left in the Great Basin. Primo sage step habitat for sage grouse and many other wildlife species such as songbirds, pronghorn, and mule deer. Native rangelands also are highly valued by ranchers for livestock grazing. Native perennial plants provide a sustainable food source for livestock and wildlife. To give firefighters a better chance to stop wildfires when they're small, the Bureau of Land Management is working to create a series of strategically located fire breaks. Grass, weeds, and shrubs are the fuel for wildfires on rangeland. The objective is to use livestock to reduce highly flammable cheatgrass vegetation in the spring when it's green and palatable to eat. The goal is to create a fire break 200 feet wide on either side of the road that runs for 30 miles along the front side of the Owyhee Mountains. The goal is to reduce vegetation there to provide a safe place for firefighters to operate and uh, hopefully stop any fires. And we're using cows to try and attempt to get to that uh, end point. Fuels management is a large part of the solution but the only ubiquitous fuel manager that's on this land are all the livestock that graze it. So the challenge, can we marshal those livestock into strategically doing fuel work that's gonna have a huge impact given the scale of the wildfires that are occurring out here now. So uh, I, I think there's a lot of promise. In the Owyhee front, the objective is to graze cheatgrass and grasslands down to a two to three inch standard by June 30th. By the end of the spring season in 2020, the cattle were hitting that standard to create fire breaks and safe zones for firefighters. A continuous carpet of short cheatgrass mowed by cattle could be seen at the base of the Owyhee front. Yeah, it's going really well this year. Uh, this will be the third year of full implementation. Uh, I think we've reached a lot of our objectives in, in big portions of that uh, fuel break. Participating ranchers support the program. Yeah, I think it's a good program to keep going. We're still in the experiment stage. And it's kind of new to everybody, so but I think it's going in a good direction. Well, we just had the soda fire not too long ago, and that kind of fire is not, not very good for anybody, so anything you can do to help slow those catastrophic fires down, help the firefighters out, that's good in my book. We've learned a lot. We've, uh, we've tried different classes of cattle to see what would work the best and, and uh, trying to hold cattle in a certain areas has been kind of tough. To, you have to ride every day and keep water available right at where you want them. Under the BLM targeted grazing program, the ranchers bear the cost of herding, water hauling and managing livestock to create the fire breaks. And the BLM provides the public range at no cost as an incentive for ranchers to participate. The alternatives are mechanical mowing, blading, seeding or spraying herbicides to control vegetation, all of which cost taxpayers more money. Ranchers say the benefits outweigh the costs so far. Well, it's cheaper than feeding hay. Daniel Richards says his cattle have shown good weight gains, even on dry cheat grass. Yeah, they do, they've been doing pretty good. Uh, even the year that we did it in May on dry feed, the cattle did very well on it. Pellant is working together with Pat Clark, 
research team leader for the Agricultural Research Service, on a research study to see how experimental targeted grazing projects are working in Idaho, Arco, Nevada, and Lakeview, Oregon. The research is tracking how much fuel is reduced by targeted grazing, changes in plant composition in targeted grazing areas, and what methods seem to work best to keep cattle focused on firebreak areas next to existing roads. In the second year of the study in Elko, the grazed firebreak helped to snuff a grass fire. The Boulder Creek fire started on a Monday and it was 100% contained at 1,030 acres in 48 hours. The research site, west of Elko, is tracking the effectiveness of targeted grazing in a 21-mile long pasture. The pasture is fenced on both sides of the firebreak. It's been grazed by up to 2,400 cow-calf pairs from March to May. Stocking rates have varied. Using permanent fence to focus cattle on firebreak areas is highly effective, but expensive. Rancher Daniel Richards tried using temporary solar fencing to keep cattle focused on the firebreak area in the Owyhee front. First year we did it with fencing and uh, that was later in May and the whole, whole thing was dry and we still got good results but you have to put a fence in to keep them there. Since then, Richards has used herding, water, minerals, salt and protein supplements to keep his cattle focused on the firebreak area. We're trying to keep the cows right here as much as possible without having to put in miles and miles of fence and cows are, they do what cows do. So when it's cool weather they always fan out a lot more spread out. They have their favorite spots in this allotment that they've had for years. So it's kind of trying to train my cows to stay here during a certain time and it can be tricky. It's fairly labor intensive. Overall, the grazing management side of the project is challenging because ranchers raise their cattle to spread out and disperse on the range. Before we have done this targeted grazing, that's what we tried to do is get our cows spread out as much throughout the allotment so they're not really hammering on one spot versus another spot. But now we're trying to train them the other way. <laughs> well, yeah, to hold them in an area, yeah. That's the tough part is keeping them focused on eating and just this grass along the road. Blackstock uses a range rider to keep his cows focused on the firebreak areas. I've been really lucky to have Howard. He's been really good about taking on this project always riding his horses and so that's, it really works good for us. The ranchers do like being able to graze livestock on the cheatgrass when it's ripe and palatable starting about March 1st. This year um, things have been working a lot better. We got, we got to come out here uh, quite a bit earlier and um, got the cows on the cheatgrass while it was nice and green so they were happy. Um, we've kept them um, happy with the water and kept them where we wanted them with the water um, and the salt and the mineral. That's, that's been key. Okison says it's interesting how the ranchers are using different management techniques. We have one operator that's completely using uh, herding uh, and has actively got uh, cowboys out there every day and is moving the animals where they need to be. Others are uh, taking a more uh, passive approach and just using the, you know, the, the supplement and the water and, and, and then you know, once a day maybe focusing the animals down to where they uh, should be and that's, that's working for them. Um, and then there, we've got another one that's uh, working on uh, doing some extensive you know, temporary electric fencing. At a bigger scale, the BLM is rolling out ambitious plans to create about 990 miles of fire breaks along existing roads on 3.6 million acres of public lands under the Tri-State Fuel Breaks Project in Idaho, Nevada, and Oregon. The BLM plans to use a mix of mowing, seeding, and blading to create hundreds of miles of fire breaks per year. Targeted grazing will be used as one method of maintaining those fire breaks. Again, you're trying to modify fuels, and that modifies your fire behavior, right? So, so as a fire burns into one of these fuel breaks, like let's take the targeted grazing one, 
uh, your flame lengths are going to be reduced and, your, and the rate of spread is going to go way down. And, and of course, that's going to make your fire community more successful in that fuel break. Okison reminds us about the fire triangle, oxygen, heat, and fuel. If you break any one of those legs, in other words, if you take oxygen away, it can't burn, right? So land management agency control over is the fuel. Lessons learned from the targeted grazing project in the Owyhee Front, plus findings from the research project on targeted grazing, will provide guidance on how best to create fire breaks in the future, Okison says. Um, can we do this at a landscape level? Can we graze on an annual basis uh, in a strategic manner uh, and reach our objectives? So far, we're, we're showing good results. I'm really excited. Um, I, I really like the project. Everybody's been bouncing ideas of what's working and what's not working, and I think we're kind of coming along with it. Yeah, for a fuel break, it makes a lot of sense to me.